everyone, I hope you're all well. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Malin, and today I'm going to show you three recipes that I like to make with apples. It's apple season here in Sweden where I am, and it's actually one of those fruits that we can eat for the most part of the year, even though we live in a cold climate, so I thought it would be a great fruit to show you how to use in your kitchen as well. And a few weeks ago, I had a really nice day with my friend Moa, uh, taking lots of pictures of apples, so I felt really inspired to create more recipes with apples because of that as well and we're going to make a apple sauce or apple compote we're going to make a soup with parsnip and apple it sounds a little strange to have apple in a soup but i promise you it's delicious and we're also going to make a baked apple dessert and as always you will find all of the full recipes linked in the description box if you want to make them for yourself but yeah i'm going to show you how to make it all right now and we're going to start with with the apple sauce or the apple compote. Before we get to cooking, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on creative topics like photography, videography, illustration, design, but also they have great classes on how to build a brand or a creative business, and also lots of classes on how to develop yourself with creative practices. I personally really enjoy that there's such a great variety of classes on Skillshare that can be helpful in many different aspects of life. I can learn important creative skills that I can apply in my work, but I can also learn to build my business. But more importantly, I think I've realized that there are lots of great classes on there to sort of switch up my mindset and get a better quality of life. One of the classes that have really helped me with this is Michelle B's class, Designing the Life You Want. In that class, she takes you through four exercises to work on clarity and motivation. And it comes with a printable workbook that makes it very easy to actually do the exercises. And the exercises, they encourage you to examine life the way you lead it now and defining any areas you might want to change or improve and then helps you build the new habits. And this in turn helps you to design your day-to-day -day in a way that it relates to your intention and goals. Having used Skillshare myself for quite a long time now, I really think it's a great resource for learning in an easy manner at your home. It's a great place to learn from and connect with other creative people. And if you would like to try out Skillshare for yourself, the first 1000 of you to click the link in the description box will receive a free trial to Skillshare Premium. But now let's get to cooking. It's the same kind of ingredients, uh, whether you want to make a compote or a sauce, it's just a little bit different in how you prepare it. And I will explain it all to you, but the first thing we're going to do is to take our apples and cut them into chunks and uh, remove the seeds. that's really great about apple compote or applesauce is that you can use apples that are going a little bit brown or have some spots on them or like well here something's been pushed into it and it's gone a bit brown and they're perfect for this and also apples that you don't think are that tasty to eat raw like if they're a bit um, you know flowery or uh, well you know what you like in an apple. If it's one that you don't really like to eat raw, you can definitely put it in an applesauce and it will be delicious, I promise. And uh, another thing that I like to do when I make applesauce is to leave the skin on. And you might want to take it off, but I really don't mind the skin on. I don't think it really changes the consistency that much or I don't mind the texture of the cooked skin. I think it's just soft and nice. And it's also obviously nutritious. So it's great to leave it on if you don't mind it being there and yeah I'm just gonna cut the rest of the apples then when all the apples are cut I'm going to put them into a saucepan some extra flavor I like to add some cinnamon which obviously goes great with apples and also some ground vanilla so we 
could of course use vanilla extract in this instead or you could even go fancy and use vanilla pot it's really up to you uh, but I like to add it for the flavor like I said but you could also flavor this with other things like cardamom would be really nice or ginger all would also be really nice and um, now that the spices are in here I'm just going to add in a splash of water this makes sure that it cooks nicely and doesn't burn at the bottom at the beginning of the cooking process. And then I'm just gonna give it a good mix to make sure that the spices are evenly distributed. Then I cover it with a lid and cook it over medium-low heat for about 15 minutes or until the apples are soft. And then once it's cooked, it's time to use a stick blender to break it down. So when it comes to how much you blend your apple compote or apple sauce, it really depends on what kind of texture you like. Of course, if you're making an apple sauce, I would now go in and blitz this with my blender until it's super smooth. I can see no chunks, no pieces. Uh, yeah. That is super smooth. Uh, but I'm making a compote. Some people, when they make a compote, they don't blitz at all. You know, you cook it until it's soft and then you just stir it a bit so that the apples sort of break apart and it all comes together. But what I like to do is to just blitz it a few times sporadically uh, around and there just to make sure that it's a bit more gooey that it's all come together a little bit more so that's what i've done uh, another thing that you could do now that you've um, blitzed it is to add some liquid sweetener like maple syrup for example to sweeten it up a little bit but personally i really like the flavor of just the apple cinnamon and vanilla i think it's sweet enough but it's totally up to you now that I've reached my preferred consistency, I'm going to transfer it into a jar and then let it cool before I refrigerate it. But of course you can eat it warm as well. It's actually really nice as a dessert with maybe some whipped vegan cream or vegan custard or even some homemade vanilla cashew cream that's sweetened and maybe some granola or something else crunchy. Uh, yeah, it's a super yummy dessert. I have a recipe for that on on my website so I'll link that down below but what I usually do with this is to eat it on my breakfast so I really like it on top of porridge or oats and I also really like to eat it with yogurt and some granola for example and the compote will keep for about a week in the fridge maybe a little bit longer maybe a little bit shorter hopefully it doesn't last that long it's a super simple condiment that goes with lots of things. You could even eat it with savory food, for example, uh, as a side if you eat, you know, mash and uh, vegan sausage, for example, super yummy. But yeah, you can do lots of things with it. Lovely in breakfast, lovely in dessert, and uh, yeah, I hope you make it. So next up, I'm going to make a roasted parsnip and apple soup with butter beans in it. And it comes out really creamy. It's very simple to make. It's warming, but still fresh. And I look forward to showing you how to make it. So first of all, we're going to peel and chop our parsnips. parsnips into chunks and set them aside. up an onion into quarters or eighths depending on how large it is. I'm also slicing up half of a large leek into rough slices. I 
keep setting all the veggies aside as I go along. Then I cut the apple into quarters and remove the seeds. Now that all my veggies and the apple is chopped up, I'm crushing four large garlic cloves, but I leave the skin on. I place everything on an oven tray and I drizzle it with a little bit of oil. I season with some dried rosemary, but of course you could choose fresh if you have it, and some salt and black pepper. I give it all a good mix and then I place it in the oven to roast for about 40 minutes or until the parsnips are soft. So why I like to roast the veggies in the oven for this recipe is because I think it gives it a real depth of flavor. And another thing I like to do is to blend my soup when, once it's done in my Vitamix or high speed blender because it makes it really, really smooth. But honestly, you could do this with a stick blender as well. You would save yourself a little bit of uh, uh, dirty dishes. And I think you could get it pretty much uh, very smooth with that as well. So don't worry if you don't have that, but I'm going to do that. I'm also going to add in butter beans to the soup, like I said before. And it's a really nice way of making the soup more creamy and rich in a way. And uh, of course it adds a bit of protein to the soup as well, which is, yeah, it's, it can't hurt, right? So I'm just going to rinse these and then pop them in the blender and prepare everything for when the veggies are done. Once I've added in my rinsed beans to the blender, I'm also adding in some vegetable stock powder. vegetables are done in the oven I'm adding them into the blender as well followed by water and I'm also going to season with some salt and black pepper before I blend it smooth So with the soup, if you find that your blender jug is too small, you can of course split the ingredients in two and blend it twice. And again, like I said, you can use a stick blender as well. So now that it's blended, I'm just gonna pop it into a saucepan or a big pot actually, and warm it up and let it simmer for a few minutes just so that all the flavors come together and then it's ready to serve. And I'm gonna serve mine with some uh, tamari roasted seeds and I'll link down below how I make those and also with some fresh herbs and some vegan uh, cooking cream because it adds even more of that creaminess that I really enjoy this time of year. Finally, I want to show you how to make a super simple dessert that's perfect for the season and it's so nice eaten warm and it's baked apples and what we're going to do first is just mix the filling for the apples and for that I'm going to start by adding some oats to my bowl. I'm also adding in some light muscovado sugar, but you could also use brown sugar or coconut sugar if that's what you have on hand. I'm also adding in some pecan nuts as well as pumpkin seeds for a little extra crunch. 
spice things up, I'm adding some ground cinnamon. I'm also adding in some vanilla powder, again to complement the yummy flavor of the apple. Finally, I'm adding in a pinch of salt to lift all the flavors. Then I'm adding in some coconut oil, which will bind everything. And I mix that through well until it's all well incorporated. So this filling is a little bit crumbly and don't worry, it's exactly as it should be. And now that it's all mixed and I make sure there are no like sugar lumps or anything, I'm gonna set it aside and I'm going to prep the apples. And uh, basically with the apples, what we wanna do is to core them, but leave the bottom intact. So we're gonna remove the innards <laughs> of the apple a little bit and the uh, seeds. bottom and tag so that the filling doesn't fall out but stays in the apple. Once the seeds are removed from all the apples, I'm going to fill them with the filling we just prepared and I just fill them to the top and place the apples on a baking tray. Now that these apples are filled, I'm going to pour in a little bit of water to the tray and this will make sure that there is some steam in the oven and I'm literally just using like two tablespoons of water. But yeah, it makes sure there's some steam in the oven that cooks the apples nicely without drying them out. And now they're ready to bake for about 40 to 45 minutes and then they're gonna come out all soft and yummy and the filling is gonna crisp up a little bit. So let's pop them in the oven. So now that that's in the oven, I want to say something about these uh, apple bits that we cut out. Of course, you can eat them, they're a great snack while you're waiting for your apples to cook. Uh, you could also chop them up and use them in the apple compote we made before, or you could even make apple cider vinegar using these scrap bits. I can leave a link to our recipe in the description box if that's something you want to try. It's very simple, I promise. It sounds hard, but it's not. Rob loves doing it, so yeah. Uh, just a tip so we don't throw that away. And now I'm gonna show you a, well, another component of this dessert. It's something we're gonna serve it with. I'm going to make a caramel out of dates. It's super simple, but we're just gonna start by pitting the dates so that we can blend them smooth. Once all the dates are pitted, I'm gonna place them in my blender. And to this, I'm adding some water to be able to blend it smooth. And I'm going to add in a pinch of salt to get that slight salted caramel flavor. Then I blend it until it's smooth and it's ready to serve. apples are finished. Some of them burst, but you know, it's okay. It's not a beauty contest. And uh, yeah, I've finished my caramel. And I wanted to say, if you don't want to be making the caramel as well, this tastes really good with some vanilla ice cream or vegan custard. Uh, but I've whipped up some vegan uh, cream. So I'm going to be serving these three components together. And then this dessert is all done. So let's put it together.
from me and the apples for this time. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember that you can find all the recipes linked in the description box if you want to make them at home and please share with me your pictures or stories if you make them. I love to hear from you. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye!